We have Jeff Cork and Jeff Marchiafava, hey. a crew that has not seen each other since last year when we went on the Days Gone cover story trip. It's true. Was it last year? It feels like a lifetime It was ago. last year. It was the June issue. So. Oh, okay. Mm. As everybody remembers. Um, so, you know, since then, Days Gone has been a little bit quiet. I was very happy with the coverage we pumped out all that while ago. We had like the first hour of the game. Mm-hmm. We had an episode of New Gameplay today. We yep. tried to beat the Horde, mm-hmm. um, despite the frame rate trying to fight back. Yep. Uh, and they've released a couple trailers since then about like exploring the world. There's a story yeah. trailer recently. They had that uh, press release about the game being delayed. That was exciting. Yeah, yeah. there's no doubt People about were that. into that. Yeah, uh, then we got to tweet out our joke again from the rapid fire about, did you ever consider calling it, what was the joke? State of delay. State of delay. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, Jeff Cork, what did you get to see from this game recently? I got to see the opening hour again. Interesting. And then they kind of skipped us ahead in the demo, and then it was about four hours in the open world. This is pretty insidery, but I think it's interesting. Yes. Um, first hour. Yes. You had a hot take. I, I uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, hype up something on GameFormer.com. I have a little feature <laughs> uh, about this as well, but I'll kind of give you the high level about it. The opening has changed, I would say, fairly dramatically from what we saw Originally, which is crazy because you can see the entire opening hour yeah. on our YouTube channel or, or GameFormer.com if you want, and like it seemed pretty much done. So that they would yeah. take something done and then while they're, I don't know, I think tweak it around and ultimately I think it, it makes the the intro a lot better. Yeah, and I I enjoyed what I played before, but I understand like I have a tendency I like slow stories that kind of take their time to yeah. like for you to kind of absorb yourself in there and everything, and that was probably not what they were going for. They wanted um, it to be action <laughs> oriented and people to have fun. So they've kind of tightened it up a little bit. They've added uh, like one section in particular, like, and you can see video of this on the site where we kind of, we kind of broke this clip out where the main character and his buddy, Boozer, not Boomer, which is one of my greatest regrets. Hang on. So this is when we, t- throughout that entire month of coverage, when we talked about his best friend, Boozer, we called oh, him Boomer because oh. we had just played Far Cry 5. I, on, I, I die a little inside every time I think about that. Did we do it more than once? Oh, yeah. Yes. Just we were very consistent Just about it. Because uh, we defense. recorded all those videos in the it same once. day. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, I heard you did a little little joke about that. I <laughs> I may have gone. I had a, uh, I went to a Mall of America and had an airbrush artist make a shirt that said, <laughs> Boozer. <laughs> nice. Really? It, yes. And, oh, I should I should have worn it today, but yeah. And then you wore it at the event. I did. Did you like slowly unzip your jacket? Well, in front they of them? made a reference. Like they made a joke about it. Uh, John Garver to Jeff Ross, and then I went. Mm. When you really revealed your custom shirt. To... Uh, well, I was. That was the plan. I realized I was not wearing a shirt at all, and it was just, no, just hair, just hair. That's hilarious. Did they did they appreciate? They thought it? it was funny. Did you feel like an? Than having to wear a shirt that said boozer the rest of the time? No, my zippers typically go back up. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. All right, sorry. So, anyway, anyway so back boozer. to the, the section with boozer and Deacon St. John. Yeah. Where in the original demo we saw, like, for instance, there's like a roadblock that is blocking the road, which is, you know, it's, it's putting in the work. We got it. And uh, Deacon and boozer push it out of the way, and it's kind of tutorializing how to push things out of the way which is very exciting, but nothing happens after that. It's just kind of like the promise of an action sequence, but nothing happens. And now what they've introduced, you get jumped by some, some bad dudes, and then there's like a combat tutorial. And so just p- it's pushing little things like that, and then it. also uh, kind of we went into it, and I think that ultimately makes it a lot stronger, is they've gotten rid of that element of choice that they had originally, where like at certain points they actually would kind of go... Zzzz, where it's like, do you want to do this kill shot? Do you want right. to take Boozer's shotgun? And David Cage's face actually <laughs> transparently just fades in on the screen, which I didn't understand. It was like this. Yeah, he's mm. thinking hard. Mm. Make the call. Make the call. And I, they said, you know, when I asked about it later, they were like, well, you know, we didn't find a way to effectively communicate what the outcomes were, and it was just kind of confusing, and it was something they really liked, but they cut it out, and they realized it just made stuff stronger. And I think that watching those interactions without... Pausing, what will you do? Will you press square or triangle, you mm-hmm. know? And you're like, mm-hmm. it really did kind of break the flow up a little bit. And, and it's also, I think it just kind of implies a different type of game. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, another thing I remember during the cover story trip that they were debating a lot was having numbers pop off the enemies. Mm-hmm. Is that still on the build? I don't think I saw the, the numbers popping off on it. Really? They removed it? I don't recall. Honestly, that wasn't something I was looking for, but okay. yeah, it didn't. I don't think that happened. Oh, interesting. Okay. 
Um, I could be wrong, but yeah. And overall, from all the stuff you played, did your perspective change? Because I was surprised. It seems like the internet, Mm -hmm. maybe overall, is kind of in a best case scenario, cautiously optimistic about yeah. Days Gone. Of like, I don't think it's going to rock our worlds, but it seems mm-hmm. like a solid PlayStation 4 exclusive. Uh, from the cover story trip, I was amazed how hot the two of you were on. Of like, yeah, I'm totally on board for this type of game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yeah, and absolutely. I'm misstating your position. After playing for five hours, uh, how's your perspective changed? Oh, I'm like, even more so. I think that really? that additional time, whether or not that's what it was used for, I think there's just a level of polish that I think needed to be done still even when we saw it. So I think the Freakers, for instance, look a lot better. Uh, Their animations seem a little creepier. It seems like they have a better perception of you. There were some, like, and also, like, some kill animations when you kill them, the ragdolls acted kind of goofy, you know, and you're you're like, yeah, "Eh, that's that's video games. But I didn't see a lot of that stuff. I think visually, it's an amazing-looking game. Really? And frame rate's gorgeous. much more solid now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. I only interacted with one Freaker horde, and uh, I, I, they were very generous with giving us a nice uh, bounty of weapons to use, and we were able to be successful, and I uh, died a couple times. I was like, oh, nope, no, this is just not meant to be. Oh, no. Right. I'm so sorry. I know. It was a rough gig. Yeah. Uh, so anything surprising in the open world? In the open world? I think I just I was surprised at how well everything kind of works together. Um, if you recall the fast travel... That's something you have to unlock by kind of clearing out those routes of uh, like infestations and nests and everything. Yeah. Which I I was kind of like focused more on like seeing the story and doing a little bit of exploration and things like that. So I did not unlock fast travel. But even then, I I just enjoyed rolling around in that world on the motorcycle. That it was a lot of fun. I should also make it clear like I'm also a person I never used fast travel in Red Dead Redemption Two. Right. I just like that. I mean, and unlike. Your horse, you have to manually control the motorcycle. You can't, it's not like Kit and Knight Rider where you just say, okay, take me to Hot Springs. Yeah. Did uh, did some of your love for State of Decay come through about like, oh, just maintaining the vehicle, all that stuff? Yeah, it, it's not as fussy as I was kind of concerned about. Yeah. Um, like there were times when the motorcycle did break down, but I had scrap to repair it. And uh, I did, in one time I was really pushing my luck with how much fuel I had. And I like literally coasted into a settlement as they were opening the gates as the, it hit zero. So I was like, oh, okay, I was, I was really pushing it. But um, yeah, I think fuel and scrap is plentiful enough where uh, as long as you're like paying attention, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Yeah. Cork, do you ever get the feeling that like hmm. someone's watching us and like eavesdropping on our conversation? What is this? <laughs> this weird creeper you over there? What questions do you have about these guys? Yeah. Uh, you you had mentioned in kind of your preview coverage that came out of your recent mm-hmm. playing time that they've tightened up the gunplay and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. I guess my the thing that I'm most interested in the game from when when we saw it was that it the game had its own kind of identity and feeling mm-hmm. and ha- is that still the same? Has that changed at all? Kind of it it felt more almost survival oriented and i think i appreciated that they kind of slowed down the gameplay a little bit yeah and it sounds like they're they're trying to get you into the action a little faster in the, at least the opening in the opening but for the, sure but the kind of core feeling is still there yeah yeah i think the the biggest goal was they wanted to kind of tutorialize the important stuff so that when they do kick you out into the open world you don't feel like completely overwhelmed because mm-hmm. there are a lot of systems in play that you have to to worry about like you've got the like keeping track of the motorcycle and then just the way that the the freakers interact with other like members of their weird infected species and then human enemies and then the way that ambush camps can like create a problem for you on the roads and everything. So I think I that's what I like about it though is that the, the world feels very cohesive in a way that it, that is satisfying and um, it's it's hard but does it feel unfair? Okay. Uh, story. Mm. Yeah. Do uh, feel like your expectations are set? Do you know what this flavor of story is going to be like here? Yeah, I think they're, they're certainly laying the groundwork. You can, I don't want to, like, I think if you're paying attention to some of the story beats, you can kind of see where things are going. Yeah, don't, don't spoil anything. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I don't think you're going to get completely blown away, like, like, putting your hands in your head, or head in your hands. What? Afterwards, just going like, oh, no, Deacon, 
why did you do those things? But you you did say in your preview mm. coverage that he came off as a more likable character. Yeah, I like And him. that you wanted to be his best buddy now, right? All I want to do is think about Deacon St. John. I, I like that performance a lot. Even yeah. from the stuff that we saw, mm-hmm. Sam Witwer, who voiced Darth Maul uh, in Solo, everybody. Look out for that one, uh, which is a weird connection. But I, he has a weird kind of breathy tone, but it almost... You could say he, maybe he's overacting it, but he's he's packing a lot of personality into Deacon, who very easily could have been a very flat read. They could have completely blown it, yeah, with that character because I think people, I think the kind of I think the game kind of came out on a like off balance when they they debuted with all that the horde footage, which kind yeah. of seemed like at first it was like, oh wow, this looks really cool, and then it was like, geez, when is this gonna? You know what I mean? Like to, to see that for the first like beat of the game, and right. then. Also, just be like, oh, you're playing as a biker guy. I think a lot of people are like, nope. I also, don't want to be freakers. the biker guy. Yeah. yeah, also, they're called freakers. But I, I think that I, I think that the consensus seems to be building, and I, I would certainly be on board with this, where this game, I think, is going to surprise a lot of people that, that have got negative feelings about it based really? on what they've seen before. Yeah. What, what makes you say that? I just think it's really fun, and I think it's cool, and I think it's doing a lot of interesting stuff. That's that's great to hear. Yeah. I like being optimistic on this show. Yeah, when is it coming out again? Uh, April 26th, I Okay, believe. so send your hate mail, Jeff Cork's wrong, to... Uh-huh. Uh, let's see, you're off Twitter now, so I guess you can't really do anything. You can still like shout into the void, and I'll make you feel like a big person. <laughs> great. That was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us. 